Hey everybody! Today we're here in Binondo, also known as the Manila's Chinatown. We're here to go on a tour of the Chinatown Museum located in the Lucky Chinatown Mall. Uh, we really took the time and effort to join the tour today because it's going to be particularly special since it's going to be hosted by Ivan Lee. So for those who are unaware who Ivan Lee is, he is one of the pioneers of the walking tours here in the Philippines. And he is also known as the tour guide of the very important people, including top YouTuber Mike Chen. And recently he hosted uh, the Martha Stewart. So come with us and join our small tour and later on we get to try some of Binondo's food offerings. So we're finally here at the Chinatown Museum in Lucky Chinatown Mall. Uh, we're just waiting for the tour to get started. So hope you enjoy coming along with us. So, uh, I want concept of this place first before I we sort of go through the historical part, okay? It's not going to be a very academic thing. It's more of a history slash sharing of experiences of growing up within this enclave that we're going to be doing, okay? So the tour should be around maximum 1.5 hours. Uh, but after the history of the museum. Yeah. The museum is owned by Megaworld Foundation. So our chairman, Andrew Tan, thought of coming up with the museum because um, first he grew up here. So most of the, of the all of Megaworld properties are this. So they want each property, for example, Akta Museum, to have a museum. And the, the second one is this. The first one was Ilo Ilo Museum of Contemporary Arts. Right? To introduce you to the museum. So basically we have 18 galleries. And what you see is how it kind of looks inside. But that setting of the how visually how it looks and also um, the feel is really 1800 and then you have 1700. By here it's like 1800, right? So we will be talking about being on the church, and Ivan will give you a more personal personal take on the. <laughs> we have the Alcaceria, the Binondo shops. Of course, the Esteros, because Binondo is an island. And then we have Elo Chantaylos, the shop of Ramon Ongbin. When you move out, this already is the Escolta area. And of course, we have the Grand Villa. So one of the reasons why we end with the Grand Villa is because, first, when the war happens, second, because logically, we don't have any more space. <laughs> so we'll end in a good note um, there. Okay. Uh, my name is Ivan Tanti, by the way. And um, I do tours here in Manila. So I work for an outfit called One Manila Walks. But one of the tours that that sort of got stuck to us, that we got associated with, is the Binondo Tour, which we, which we have been doing for the last 15 years, since 2005, okay? So um, it's a very personal place for me, Binondo, because uh, not only did I grow, I lived here for eight years of my life, so since until about your age, eight years old, we left Binondo, but if you look at my family's history, my lolo, si, let's call him Angkong D, okay? <laughs> Angkong D Hao Chak, say no the D Hao Chak. Uh, he was a Chinese immigrant who came here in the 1930s, so pretty recent. No? So we're not a very old, uh, I mean, Chinese family compared with, say, the Wang Kong, who has been here for 1800s. We're pretty recent, and I'm only um, third or fourth generation. But, you know, the story of my family is very reflective of the story of Binondo, how, how it grew about, okay? Uh, and, you know, Binondo is a place that we usually, as well, always, as a place we ask anyone from Manila, Binondo equals... Chinese. Chinatown. Kailangan siya Chinatown Museum, no? But you know, if you look at the history of Binondo, I mean, it's Chinatown, but it's not all Chinese thing. No? As you'll find out, when we go in, no? you're going to see the different types of people who have shaped the history of this neighborhood. And you know, Binondo, you cannot really take out the history of, you cannot talk about the history of Manila without talking about the history of Binondo. Because if Binondo did not exist in Manila, then a good chunk of Manila's history will probably be not what it is today. Okay? So uh, we're going to discuss more of that. Um, well, I have here up with Koyang Ambet Ocampo. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions that I think I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you. I mean, I'm not sure I'm the historian yeah. of the country. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you. Okay, anyway, thank you for coming. I know it's been uh, into traffic in the past. I don't know why. But you're all here, and let's hope you enjoy our walk through today. Okay? This is a map of Minondo. Okay? Now, so Binondo today, we talk about Manila, about old Manila, you think of Binondo. But you'd be surprised, uh, for the first 300 years of its existence, 
Philanthropy was actually not part of the idea. No? Yeah. Why? Because when you know when 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 Spain colonized us and then Manila became our capital in 1571. When they when, when when you talked about Manila as the city for 300 years under Spanish rule, it was basically across the river. Uh, sorry, across the river to the south. And what is this area? Today? It's Intramuros. Mm -hmm. Well, so that was how Manila was defined <laughs> uh, for 300 years. Basically, the, the walls of Intramuros, that was the border of the city, okay? And who lived in Intramuros? Castilla. Spanish, okay? Although, I would, I would probably say it's a large number of it would be of Spanish ancestry, but not all the man. Why? Because, of course, the people who live there, the people who live there, they need to help. Who will help? Filipinos. Chinese, right? So, we don't have to say that, but those of those who live there were of the ruling class. And that included folks from the colonial government, no? It also included the folks from the Catholic Church, okay? So, yung mga people that they ruled, the Tagalogs, the Chinese, pwede naman pumunta doon. Pero, hindi sila nakatira doon. So, parang ngayon, di ba, like, the rich people, they live in poor this country. Mm-hmm. Doon siya mga asset sa labas, mga gilig. So, yung Pilondo, parang siyang gilig ng araw, sa labas ng pader, okay? So, why do we have a Pilondo, okay? So, early on, when the Spanish colonized us, okay? Um, that that opened the doors of Chinese migration to our city. Okay, so before that, the Chinese they have been coming here, but since we, we, we weren't a centralized government at the time, there was no the Philippines, right? So the Chinese when they just came, they deflated, that was aalis, papanek, and on. So they didn't think of really settling down, no? But come Spanish colonization, the Matiyaman Castilla, that's when they thought, that, hey, you know what? We're gonna go there and most likely probably settle over there, no? And as a result of that Chinese migration, after 1571, when Manila became our capital, okay? Now, it came to a point that, you know, you know, between us and Spain, and between us and China, who was closer to us? China. China, right? So as expected, there were more Chinese who came here as opposed to Spanish. Spanish. And you know why? Because from Spain to Manila, you know how long it took at the time? One year. Oh. Or almost a year just to get here by boat. Mm -hmm. And from China to Manila, three weeks. So of course, mas maraming inchik na nagpunta rito, no? And as a result of that, uh, medyo ginagsa, you know, Manila, there were a lot of Chinese who came here. And the Spanish being the smaller number, no? They did, I guess, totally understand the community. And you know, you don't understand the community. Sometimes you breathe fear and distrust, right? Mm -hmm. And so eventually, the, um, the Spanish said to the Chinese, say, you know what, Chinese, you can come here. But uh, we need you, but we also have reservations for, from the community, no? So, sabi nila, why don't you live in a special area called the Parian? No, no, the Parian was an area initially inside Intramuros, but eventually, the Malamas na siya. It's roughly where you have Metropolitan Theater today. If you look at that area, you know that area, the Hall area. So, that was the original uh, Chinatown. In fact, we had several Parians before. Not just one, kasi naglipat-lipat yan, okay? Ngayon, so Pinondo wasn't really Chinatown in that sense yet in the 1300s, okay? Now, for the Spanish, coming here, they had several motives. And one of the most important motives of Spanish colonization is that, okay? Right here. They came here because, among others, they wanted to spread this thing called the Catholicism. No? And priests, no? So originally, you know, the church was a Dominican parish, no? Uh, and they were also the ones who, who ran uh, USD because the Dominicans were educators, no? But they established uh, USD in 1611. In fact, it's a little trivia for you. The Dominicans, um, they, were, they were quite adept in handling the Chinese because some of them were actually sinologists. They learned, they tried to learn the language and you know, learning a language in the 1600s is not as easy as learning language today, mm -hmm. no? Uh, the oldest Chinese-Spanish dictionary recorded, as, I, as, as we know today, is actually in USD. Mm -hmm. no? And it just shows to you how serious the Dominicans were in that, in that missionary um, uh, goal of converting <coughs> the Chinese here in Manila. Kasi naisip nila, pagtapos ng Manila, baka pwede na sa China. Uh, any old town in the country, di ba yung ng simbahan? Anong katabi ng simbahan? Anong katapat ng simbahan? Asa, di ba? Anong katabi ng plaza? 
Munisipyo. Oh, sa kanila ba ganon? Sa Binondo, walang munisipyo. Oh, ano? Hindi ko na papansin. Puro alatal. Mm-hmm. Bangko ang katabi. <laughs> Di ba? Sa kami plaza, pero wala siyang munisipyo. In fact, in the 1800s, yung, yung katabi yung building ng simbahan. Hindi nga building eh. Ano yun? Pagawaan ng sigarilyo. Mm-hmm. Ano yun? Simbahan. Ito. Simbahan. Oh, ito siya. Simbahan. Tapos pagawaan ng sigarilyo. Sa harap kita ng ganda. Di ba? So, medyo unique siya. Because, uh, I guess of its history na din. No? So, meron siyang pagawaan ng sigarilyo. Ito yung simbahan. Ito yung pagawaan ng sigarilyo. It's called the, uh, the insular uh, factory model. Like, yeah. Yes, you get that. Uh, yeah, that's that's the claim that you have to assess. Okay, so the mga may mga research, USC archives, para mikan mo pala tama mo. Nakatawa pa nong the oldest Spanish Chinese dictionary na kumita niyo sa USC for 400 years. Akala nila ano lang yon? Walang kwentang ng libro. It was only like last year or last two years that oh, ano pala to is the oldest recorded. Spanish Chinese dictionary ever found as of today. Uh, wala pa kung tatanda doon. And it was made here. No? In, in Manila. I'm not sorry kung kung Bironda pa. In Manila, anyway. Okay? So yan yan. Di ba? Nung just came here in 1930s. But after that, hinanap na lahat dito. So local na. No? So in Bironda, maraming ganyan na, na situation. No? Always new batch of immigrants come in. And then the old ones, they get uh, localized. They get integrated. And they move out of Bironda. Eventually, they go to Quezon to Malawi, <laughs> eventually Green Hills, and yes. Green Chan, and Forbes Park. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the pattern talaga. So, every time, maraming yung migas na nagbubuhay ng kasaysayan na. Until now. Mm-hmm. Until now. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? So, yung mga Spanish Chinese dictionary, mm-hmm. maraming mga Spanish Chinese dictionary, maraming mga Spanish Chinese These are some of the old uh, businesses, but this is more 1900s. At saka, pinawag na hindi lang puro Chinese. Ha? Uh, if you look at this called, uh, was called Isoy. And this one is part of Pinongga, by the way, geographically. Oh, so, ito na to. The buildings are still there. Um, so, yeah, talaga. Until the 1960s, I would say, from the 1850s to the 1960s, Pinondo was the, the true commercial hub of Manila. Probably the entire country did. Kasi nga, ang daming banko na nagsimula dito. Ito ni Pasho, who worked in Pinondo. I say, you know, he, he had a regular job, okay? And he was there in, you know, in the church. Ah. Yes, there in. Second, second channel, bye. Mga itchy talagpunta rito. Sabi ko naman, skilled naman yung karamihan. Majority were Hokkien, from Pujans, but they were also from another province called Canton. So they were the Cantonese. Okay? So, ano ba pinag-aiba ng Cantonese at saka ng Hokkien? Mm-hmm. Para mong sinabing isa Bisaya, isa Ilonggo. Mm-hmm. Iba yung salita. Pero same, all the same area. Iba din yung pagkain. Medyo original difference sila, no? And we have, uh, you also have a sizable Cantonese immigrants who came here. Especially when Hong Kong became a British colony. Mm-hmm. Sila kasan yan eh. Okay? And the Cantonese, a lot of them, went to the food business. Uh, bakery. Ang dami na tumas ng bakery, no? At saka kainan. So, the earliest restaurants in Manila, uh, most likely, no? Were probably opened by Cantonese uh, immigrants. And they were called Pansiteria. No? So, yung mga Pansiteria ng araw, they were like the Starbucks of their time. Yeah, because that, that those were the only places to eat. And that's why if you read Jose Rizal's novel, di ba yung LPD ba yun? No? No? One of those novels, there's a scene there, at a pancitaria <coughs> in Pinondo. Mm. So, pancitaria, makalisa de buen gusto ayun, no? Yeah. Yung building yun, siyempre. Okay, that became a location. Uh, so, I guess, this is fine with the city side. Siguro. Oh, then yung building yun, siyempre. Yung bahay na yun. Yeah, so, existing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sana ma-restore. Oh, that's pretty good. It's still there. Yun yung bahay sa corner. Medyo bibigyan. Siyempre, dapat ugupan. So, that you uh, understood our community more in this little, um, tour that we have. Uh, well, feel free to go around and take a look at more of the exhibits if you like old stuff, interesting in mga archival exhibits then. Okay? But after this, uh, you can also walk around Binondo and get to feel the real history of what this museum is actually like to tell you the story of. So, after our tour of the Chinatown Museum, we decided to try out some ma me at Masuki. Masuki, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
So this is the original, and this is the beef asado wonton. So original mami, the special is 160, and the beef asado wonton is 245. Also, we're trying out the shopao. This is the shopao, the 95 peso shopao. After that filling mami for merienda, we decided to get some lumpia from Poheng lumpia house of course no food trip here in Binondo is complete without this After all that eating and walking around Binondo, we are grabbing our coffee to cap off our evening here at the 1919 Grand Cafe. So this was the former HSBC head office back in 1922, which has been converted into a cafe slash restaurant. So they serve meals and also coffee and desserts. This is how it looks inside the cafe after the renovation and the conversion has been done. As you can see, the place tends to get packed with a lot of visitors and tourists. So I'd highly suggest coming here a little early or if possible make a reservation ahead of time so you wouldn't have to wait. This is the end of our video as we learned more about Chinatown here in Binondo. So hope you like our video. Please, Please don't like, forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you on our next vlog. Bye!